Pro. Here we go. There we go. Are we back? We are back. That was good stuff. So, Hap was originally, uh, Hap, a.k.a. Historic Approximations, was originally entitled Steve's Historic Approximations, so Shap is the name I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wanted me to or not. Uh, it was my own unintellectual historical summary of real-life things in history books, that people don't 100% know. It, it, was a his, it was an unintelligent historical summary, a historic approximation, because I read the story and then I tell it. It's not 100% accurate, probably like 98, 97% accurate. Also, I like putting words in people's mouths. So, a, and it was a pretty, it was pretty gold. Yeah. The cook who accidentally invented potato chips out of spite Oh God! That yes, that one. was a classic. That was although, a good one. I, although I do love the uh, the invention of the microwave. Yes, from, from the the guys melting chocolate bar, chocolate bar that made him th thought he shat himself. Yeah, thought he shat himself. Uh, the fact that the classic arcade game Donkey Kong owes its creation to Popeye. Yes. And our epic Elmer McCurdy uh, Shap. Yes. Uh, we spent years doing Shaps, but eventually we dropped the S because a dead name is a dead name for a reason. And so it lived on for a time as Hap, historical approximations, until the segment was dropped due to stress and not wanting the podcast to be two to four hours anymore. But one Hap recently fell on my lap, and I knew I just had to discuss it here. And I'm going to try and rip through it, which is going to be difficult because I love this fucking story. But this hap has it all. It has all the ingredients of a classic hap. It, a super famous historical figure. Adultery. Murder. Give me all some dramatic right. music, bunny. True love. What, what, what was that? Give me some dramatic music, bunny. Dun, 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 dun. It has all the ingredients of a classic hap. It even has the most important ingredient. Hardly anybody knows that this shit actually happened. Okay. So, let's do this. Frank Lloyd Wright. Okay. The brother of legendary playwright Andrew Lloyd Webber and distant cousin of noted singer Taylor Lloyd Swift. Okay. He's also president of one of our uh, biggest... He's also uh, the distant nephew of one of our best presidents, uh, Barack Hussein Lloyd Obama. Yes. He, Not too many he, people know about the Lloyd because the Hussein confuses them. He was all, also all Connecticut State badminton champion. Of course, of course. Oh. Everybody knows that. So he was an architect, probably America's most famous and celebrated architects. Personally, my favorite architect was the experimental 4D architect and part-time DJ, Mr. M.C. Escher. Yes. He was an amazing DJ, Bonnie. I don't know if you ever got to see M.C. Escher live. Uh, I, I did, and his shred on the national anthem made me cry. I saw MC Escher uh, spin the wheels of steel live before, and uh, I must have had something because next thing you know, there were just stairs everywhere. Yeah, just going all over the place. And, like someone must have slipped me something. Maybe someone slipped me a Mickey. But all I know is I'm looking around, and suddenly there are fish in the air, and then they turn into birds. It was a real fucking weird concert. Yeah. So, okay, small aside, I heard this somewhere on a podcast. Maybe maybe it's a podcast, maybe it's a stand-up comedian, I don't remember. But this is pertinent to this story. Michael Jordan was so good at basketball yeah, that he had a Hitler mustache for a few years. 
Really? Okay. Yeah, if you look back, you know, he's doing a Hanes commercial and just a tiny little mustache, like right here on his uh, in the middle of his lip. Uh, and it, you couldn't really see it because, you know, he is a, a, a black-skinned man and he, he had a black mustache. But, like, do you know how good you have to be at what you do? Yeah. That you wear a Hitler mustache and people are like, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, he is the world's greatest basketball player of all time. So, if the world's greatest basketball player of all time wants to wear a little Hitler mustache, I mean, I love his shoes. Yes. And so everyone just sort of looked past that, that he wore a Hitler mustache for a few years. Well, Frank Lloyd okay. Wright. Okay, but but also consider, was this the same few years in which Dennis Rodman was active. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Dennis Rodman, uh, most well-known for for two things. Number one, being best friends of Kim Jong-un, and secondly, being a member of the NWO. Yeah. (laughs) We got really upset when he sided with Hollywood Hogan. Thank goodness Carl Malone and DDP were there. Yeah. To straighten things out. That actually happened. Wrestling's weird. (laughs) So Frank Lloyd Wright was such a good, genius, legendary architect that people way back then, people at the time, looked past how much of a sexist, perverted horn dog he was. Yeah. So here's the story. Frank Lloyd Wright, and I didn't fully write this down, So a lot of this is just going to be me winging it. So Frank Lloyd Wright is out there, and it's like the 1910s, and he's like, Hey there, I'm Frank Lloyd Wright. Because you don't know what he sounds like. (laughs) Hey there, I'm Frank Lloyd Wright there. Hey, making buildings, they look amazing. Oh, did you see my buildings? I love it. Hey, honey, we're married, and we have kids, and I love you, baby. I'm Frank Lloyd Wright. So... I'm going to build you a house. Hammer, hammer, saw, saw, staple, staple, I don't know, spackle, spackle. Here you go. Here's your house. Now I'm going to go over here in Wisconsin and build another house. Bang, bang, spackle, spackle. And the wife's like, oh, honey, uh, who are you building this house for? Oh, it's for nobody. It's for me and my mistress. What, honey? Yeah, I got me a mistress. (laughs) Love her. To death, she's got two kids, but hey, I got kids too. It's it's totally fine, you know. Well, I'm not sure if I'm okay with this. Hey, look, I'm a genius. You know who I am, bitch. I'm Frank Lloyd Wright. I can do whatever I want. I'm Frank Lloyd Wright there. And so he built this house in Wisconsin. The news, the press called it uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's <coughs> Love Cottage, and he was. Out in the open about like, here's my wife, here's my mistress, here's my mistress' kids. I love my wife, she takes care of the kids, and then here is uh my mistress that I fuck. And he was just out in the open about that shit. Yeah. And it was really surprising. Uh so I've got a quote here. Give me a sec. Okay. Local residents were not welcoming of their new neighbors. The superintendent of a county school told a reporter, quote, the scandal is bound to have a demoralizing effect on the school children of the community. It is an outrage to allow young men and women and boys and girls to grow up in the belief that a man and and a woman can disregard the bonds of marriage. This is like a 1910s, who's going to think of the children? Yes. And I find that fucking fascinating. People were so pissed off um, with their sharp tongues, disproving looks, and even threats of tarring and feathering failed to drive the couple from their neighborhood. The townspeople called upon the local sheriff to arrest him. Okay. But he didn't get arrested, Frank Lloyd Wright. And he, he gave zero fucks. This is... This is this he there he two quotes. I've got two quotes from Frank Lloyd Wright that I've combined into one. So these are actual words from Frank Lloyd Wright. 
You're going to love this. Okay. Two women are necessary for a man of an artistic mind. One, to be the mother of his children, and the other to be his mental companion, his inspiration, and his soulmate. Laws and rules are made for the average. Okay. The ordinary man cannot live without rules to guide his conduct. It is infinitely more difficult to live without rules. But that is what the really honest, sincere, thinking man is compelled to do. Basically, that's, that's a, a, a quote from Frank Lloyd Wright. So America's greatest architect was basically, I'm a genius, so I'm fucking two women. And that yes. is fascinating. And let me tell you what's even more fascinating. If Chris Pratt came out today and said this shit, then that would be a massive scandal. Frank Lloyd Wright saying this shit in like 1912, dude. Yeah. That is huge. The balls on, on, on Frank Lloyd Wright. I keep wanting to call him Andrew Lloyd Webber. Frank Lloyd Wright. That is insane to do back then. But 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 he also had money, so yeah, money yeah. helps a lot. Yeah, so like 1910, 1911, 1912, it's kind of crazy for someone to, to be as bold as that, but yeah, he had money. So Frank Lloyd Webber and his mistress are all hot and heavy, and, and uh, eventually the mistress gets a divorce, and she takes her two kids, and she goes and moves in to the Love Cottage in Wisconsin, okay. and then Frank Lloyd Wright goes to his wife and says, hey, my girlfriend got a divorce. So give me a divorce. I'm going to go marry and bang my mistress full time. And Mrs. Lloyd Wright's like, uh, okay, two things. Number one, up. And number two, off. You're not getting a divorce from me. Uh, screw you. So no divorce for Frank Lloyd Wright. So so let's, let's pin this story right there. Okay. okay. Frank Lloyd Wright hired a bunch of people bunch of people in his lifetime there was a handyman named julian carlton he was a bit disgruntled his wife was the cook and one day uh frank lloyd wright's mistress is there with the kids and some friends and they're over at the love cottage and the the Guy is working outside, handyman doing everything. Julian Carlton and his wife is making dinner. And then his wife makes dinner. And then Julian Carlton says, oh, hey, hey, honey, great job. Great job. You know what? Why don't you leave now? I'm going to stay here and uh, discuss business. So he, he I, gets I, out. I hate to interject. But I don't think this new version of Zoom is giving us the ten minute warning. I know, I noticed that. So I'm calling it a ten minute warning. Okay, ten minute warning. That's fine. So, so Julian Carlton's wife leaves, and he's like, "Hey, everybody, uh, how you doing? It's me, Julian Carlton. I'm not disgruntled at all. Anywho, uh, Frank Lloyd Weber, Frank Lloyd Wright." Wants me to do a bunch of shit around the house. So, uh, hey, do you know where the axe is? Oh, it's over here? Okay, great. Thanks. Let me go over here. Step, 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 step. Spackle, spackle, step. Oh, yeah, here's the axe. If Frank Lloyd Wright really wants this sharp, is there an axe sharpener anywhere? Oh, right here? Okay, thanks. Sharpen, 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 sharpen. Now that's nice and sharp. It, Frank Lloyd Wright wants me to do a bunch of things around the house. Do we have gasoline? We do over here. Great. Uh, that's pretty good. Do we have any more gasoline? Any more? We do? We do? Okay, great. Yeah, great. Wonderful. All right, so yeah, you guys just hang out and do your thing. And um, I'm just going to be here with my sharp axe and my shit ton <laughs> of gasoline. <laughs> so his wife is gone. They're eating dinner. Oh, there's a the 10-minute warning. 
Ah, okay. Uh, so Frank Lloyd, so Frank Lloyd Wright's wife and kids and some of their friends, they're there and they're eating dinner and suddenly they're like, oh, what's that weird smell? I don't know. That's bizarre. And then they look at the door the to the uh, dining room and there's water coming from the bottom of it and liquid. And they're like, huh, maybe, you know, like a washing machine overflow yeah. or something. It's like, huh, this must be a plumbing problem. Let's call in Julian Carlton. Maybe he has a uh, an answer for this. So Julian Carlton shows up, probably upset that Frank Floyd Wright isn't in the building, but he goes to work anyway. He axes the mistress to death. Okay. Axes the two kids to death, and everyone else left in the house he sets the entire house on fire. Frank Lloyd Wright? Frank Lloyd Wright's mistress, her two kids, and all of the people who were visiting his house okay. were killed except for two people. Two people survived, and seven people died. It was a massacre at Frank Lloyd Wright's love cottage. Okay. So then people are like, oh, it was Julian Carlton. He must have been, he must have been disgruntled. And they're looking for him and they're looking for him. And eventually they find him inside the basement's furnace. But don't worry, he didn't get burned alive. It was all the acid he swallowed after he killed everyone. Oh, nice. There's no real motive. He was paranoid and disgruntled. Eventually it was learned that uh julian carlton and I, his I, wife were being let go i and this think was i last... i believe i know the motive yes considering where this axe murdering took place Wisconsin. clearly somebody forgot their jukebox money there you go yeah that's what happens I love cottage is a masterful Fred, piece of architecture. Fred warned Fred you. Don't forget your jukebox money. You were fucking warned. You forgot your money. Now you're dead. Here's here's an important message to everyone out there that might be listening or watching or uh, following along at home with the home game. If you're ever depressed, then just think of the most serious song you can and then imagine the guy from the B-52s singing it. Yes. There have been times when I have been super massively depressed and the only thing that cheers me up is, I heard there was a secret chord that David <laughs> played and it pleased the Lord. So there's just a little life hack for you yeah so the local paper said that the fire oh this is fucking crazy the local newspaper said that the fire was and i quote the strongest argument that the avenging angel still flies nice. and if i may interject what the fuck yeah Holy shit, dude. That is an insane thing to say. People are dead, bro. In including I mean, kids. Including children. In a horribly violent way. But then uh, Frank Lloyd Wright is going to Frank Lloyd Wright. So in 1914, he rebuilt it. He rebuilt the house. In 1912, this happened. In 1914, he finally finished rebuilding the house. A woman wrote a letter of condolence to Frank Lloyd Wright. They started writing each other. And in 1923, his wife gave, finally gave him a, a divorce, and he married the, his pen pal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then in 1924, the house that he had just rebuilt burnt the fuck down. Oh. Again, this time because of faulty wiring. Now, the house, which is called Tallison, is now a historic landmark, and you can visit it. Of course people think it's haunted. I think it's haunted. I would not 
for the life of me go there with like a mistress? Because I feel that and if you visit Frank Lloyd Wright's love cottage in Wisconsin and you decide not to bring your wife and you bring your mistress, you're cursed. Yeah. Also, side note, uh, Asylum Films, call me. Yeah. I've got a great script idea. Yeah. This movie writes itself. Period. <laughs> the Frank Lloyd Wright curse. I can 100% see this entire film. But anyway, uh, that is our half. Probably the last half ever. And I gotta say, uh, I know I've said this at the end of each and every single solitary historic approximations we've ever done, but I'm shocked more people don't know this story. Oh, so am I. Because oh, this I is like some lurid tabloid shit. With a, an extremely famous person. Yeah, people know Frank Lloyd Wright. People go, oh, Frank Lloyd Wright, yes, the architect, and uh, uh, Falling Waters, and yeah, he's, a, he's a, an amazing, famous person. But what you don't hear is, he was a fucking hound dog whose mistress and kids were axed to death? Yeah. And he, he built a haunted house. This is shit that more people need to know, and I'm surprised <laughs> that more people don't know it. But there you go. That has been our historic approximations inside of our introduction, commonly known as Jeff, a.k.a. the Bunny, the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Red Shadow Legends Download today. What a packed intro. Yes. An incredible introduction. But let me tell you, Bunny, I already wrote the introduction for next week's episode. Okay. And I'm going to give you just a little hint. Okay? The movie Amityville Perrin. Okay. And Shark Side of the Moon. Those are both real movies. Okay. <laughs> That's a hint for next week. A uh, wink wink. Okay? okay. So I already wrote next week, so I'm super excited. It, next week's uh, Jeff is going to be even better than this one. But we still have movies to discuss. Bunny, don't get angry at me. Look at it this way. Since the podcast is ending in October, this is probably the last shitty double feature we'll ever have to watch. Probably. This was rough. Uh, this was a this was a pretty difficult one. I hated uh, Willie Shatner. Watch out, Eleanor, because you don't have a shirt. This is the internet, okay? Thank you. But before we get to any of that, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. I concur. We will be right back with more of the Popon film after these commercial messages. You know what I miss, Bunny? You know what I miss? What? You know what I miss? What do you this miss? is a weird thing to miss, but I miss promotional consideration paid for by the following. Yeah. When was the last time you heard that? Uh... When was the last time you heard that? When was the last time you heard calls toll free? Yeah. Not available in stores. Like, I, I just miss promotional consideration paid for by the following. I want that on a shirt. I want that on a bumper sticker. Uh, Eleanor got the coolest sippy cup in the world. She wants me to show it. Here you go. It's uh, She has two of them. And they're sippy cups. You can fill them up with any drink you want. They're kind of insane and super heavy. But yes. I concur. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Film after these commercial messages. Do 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 and break. And then... 